Hi, Jeff Love from Alternative Heating and Supplies. I'm going to discuss on how and what options you have of hooking up your boiler to your pool to heat it. Now, depending on the boiler that you're hooking to, okay, in this case I have a wood boiler drawn in the picture, and that's traditionally what my uh, base is from is outdoor wood boilers or indoor or pellet stoves or boilers of those kinds, alternative heating systems. However, you can hook this up to your indoor oil-fired boiler, natural gas boiler, uh, propane boiler, anything that you have in your traditional heating system. A boiler is a boiler. It just heats water. It's just that simple. So even if you don't have a wood boiler and you have a traditional inside heating boiler, you can hook this up to your swimming pool. And how you're going to do that is you're basically going to run two PEX lines underground. In this case, this is an underground insulation that's going to come from your house and you're going to run a system like this which keeps the two pipes your boiler water warm in the ground and it's going to send it to this heat exchanger okay now in a traditional uh, winter application which is what these boilers are usually used for it's really important that we keep them very well insulated in the ground because it's freezing outside in the summer when we're heating pools heat loss in the ground is not as important so an option to save you quite a bit of money this is about six dollars a foot you can also take two PEX lines and put them in a three inch PVC pipe and run that in the ground. Uh, that'll save you probably three, four dollars a foot. It doesn't have any insulation factor, but in the summer when we're heating pool, it's not that important that we lose too much heat in the ground. We're not really concerned with that. A lot of people ask me, well, instead of using an aquastat, which is this, to control the temperature of the pool water, uh, why can't I just do it manually? Turn it on and turn it off. You can. The only problem that I've noticed and with my own experience with my wife and kids is that when the pool temperature at 89, which is where we like it, go, drops down to 87, I hear it. And I hear it in, in the ways of, Dad, the pool's cold, or why is the pool cold? I don't want to go in it. And it's only two degrees. When the pool difference is that much, and, and when, you, when you start to spoil the kids and the wives and and everybody's happy with the pool temperature at 89 and it, you take away a couple degrees it um it, it doesn't go very well so manual manual which i've also tried did not work very well with me the other problem with manual is that we turn it on and you forget to turn it off and the pool water gets up to 91 92 degrees which is great for the first two seconds you're in but on a hot day it's not as comfortable 89 degree even on a hot day is very comfortable in the summer. It's kind of like what I call Florida swimming. It's enjoyable to get in. However, uh, you go 87 on a hot day, it's refreshing, but on a cold day, it's not. Uh, and then vice versa, you go to 92. It is uh, enjoyable on a cold day, but it's not very comfortable on a, um, uh, a hot day. So that's why 89 seems to be perfect. Um, and that's why I like it. So you can do the manual if you want, but I pretty sure that you're going to go back into the digital aquastat and take your mind at ease and not worry about that uh, getting too cold or getting too hot, keeping the family happy. Okay, I'm going to go to why a pump should run 24-7. In the wood boiler application, the wood boiler application only, the reason why we want to keep this pump circulating all the time with the bypass, okay, is that when a boiler especially in the summertime, the water, there's a big tank of uh, water in here, and the, the, the hotter water will rise to the top of the tank. And in the barrel of the chamber, which is surrounded by the hot water, is the fire. And the top of the fire chamber is the hottest part of it. So you've got both elements, the water and the, hot part of this, uh, the, heart, the hottest part of the fire chamber at the very top which is creating the water on the top to heat up very quickly. And if you're not circulating it, it could bubble or boil over or percolate. This is a common problem for most outdoor wood boilers. Some boilers don't have the problem as much, but if you keep the thing circulating all the time, it will prevent you from boiling or percolating your boiler, which in the long run could save you some of the electronics or anything that's running the machine uh, from overheating, melting, or causing problems. Okay, now I want to talk about the difference between CPVC and PVC. There is a big difference. 
most of you guys are all common with or are familiar with the white PVC. It's the plumbing inside your house. It makes great plumbing. Um, it works fine. Its longevity is excellent. Um, it's just a good product. However, it does not handle the heat very well. Most pool systems use a PVC. The pool systems are not needed to have the CPVC because the CPVC, the only difference of the CPVC compared to the PVC is that the temperatures in which it can be handled. It's more or less made from the same product. The CPVC is designed to handle the temperatures much better. So when you are plumbing this into your, your house or your pool, your tube and shell, in this case, this one already comes with unions and they're made from a CPVC. And as you notice in your pool, it's gonna be a white PVC or a flexible PVC kind of pipe. So what I least recommend is you go back as far as you can and add the CPVC. Because again, if the water from the filter stops circulating and the heater water is still flowing, the water inside this heat exchanger and these pool lines are gonna heat up dramatically. They're gonna get up in the excess of 180 degrees and maybe even higher, because in the summer, these boilers seem to run hot. So and, and what will happen is if you stay with PVC and this happens, the PVC will actually twist and dormant and you'll start getting leaks in your system on the pool side. This side of the heat exchanger is usually done through PEX and PEX can, has no problem handling those, handling those temperatures. So what we recommend is from the filter at least to the heat exchanger, you're using a CPVC. You can pick it up at any of your local plumbing stores. Just ask for it, CPVC. And from the heat exchanger, as far as you can go realistically, back to the pool with CPVC as well. That'll save you a lot of problems and I can talk from experience once again that uh, just do it right the first time and it'll make your life a lot easier. Okay, now we're gonna go into the difference between chlorine and saltwater pools. The difference is obviously the people who have the salt uh, chlorinated pools, you add your chemicals, you add your treatments, you add your pH enhancers and all that stuff. Uh, a lot of chemicals, a lot of expense, um, and if you read your Earth World magazines and your things, we're finding out that chlorine is actually really bad for us as humans. If you're going to convert over to a saltwater pool, again, I talked about it earlier, move to the Cooper Nickel. If there's any thought of you having a chlorinated pool and then in, in the near future moving into a saltwater pool or spa, go right to the Cooper Nickel. It'll much more longevity, much more durable and resilient. Boilers, wood, oil, gas. In this system, and most of my customers that I deal with are, have the outdoor wood boilers, but I wanna let everybody know that if you have a traditional indoor boiler, gas, oil, propane, you can also do this. All you gotta do is run these lines from your house to your pool, it's not as much work as you're probably hemming and hawing about uh, just running these two lines, one inch, two, from your boiler. We mount a pump onto your boiler, which circulates the water back and forth to the pool. Uh, it is a lot cheaper than adding a heating system to your pool and a tank and a propane tank. This is considerably cheaper and a lot less work, and you don't need another uh, fuel source. Something to look into. Check it out. Uh, check out our kits, check out our catalog and our website. It's alternativeheatingandsupplies.com. Uh, and our catalog, which is also can be found at the very top of our website in the center. Um, and you can download it. Or just give us a call. We'll put one in the mail for you. Have a great day.